So let's take a look at how to find the SQL Server error logs and be able to view the SQL Server errors. There's a couple of different places that you can do this and I'm going to show you three different ones in particular. Now the first thing that you could do is you could go to the start menu, you could go to your management studio or if you prefer go to all programs SQL Server 2008 management studio and log into your server as a sysadmin as the SA and it's going to be listed under the management and there's your SQL Server logs. Now these logs are for the SQL Server service. They are not for the agent. It's not for other pieces. This is the SQL Server log. And the way that it works, you can see the current log as the very first log. So that is the log that the SQL Server service is using right now. What happens is when you stop the SQL Server service, you restart it, it archives all of these. So where you see archive number six, that is six times ago when SQL Server was stopped. So what's going to happen, notice these dates, uh, the oldest one is 11.24, let me see if I can bring a highlight to that there. Uh, do you see right uh, here, 11.24? I'm going to go ahead, today's the 25th of November clearly. So I'm going to right click on the service and I'm going to restart my SQL Server. And you'll see that that one's going to go away. It's going to delete the oldest log. It's going to make archive 5, now archive 6. Then archive 4 becomes 5. What is currently current becomes archive 1, and we get a new current. Confusing? Easy? <laughs> Let me refresh. We'll go down here looking at the server logs again. And sure enough, you'll be able to see that it's now 11.25. So it deleted that oldest log. So every time you stop and restart your SQL Server, it dumps the oldest log and adds a new one. Now, I always think that six is too few. I don't know why they do six as the number. I've gotten into scenarios where I've tried to start a SQL Server service, and the service starts just enough for it to delete the old log and make a new log, but it won't fully start and so it shuts down and I keep hitting the start button I keep right clicking and saying start and eventually I do that like seven or eight times and when I go into looking at the SQL Server logs I've deleted the real log that would have told me what the problem was so let me share with you how to configure SQL Server if you right click on SQL Server logs and choose reconfigure or <laughs> sorry, uh, choose configure then you can tell it I want to limit the number of logs. So the default it makes it look like that there is no limit but there is a limit. So you want to check this box and I would think like a number like 20 is a reasonable number today. And so the next time we stop and restart the server there's now going to be an archive 7, archive 8, archive that goes all the way up to 20 now. So I prefer to do that. Now let's take a look at the uh, log viewer that's built in here before we look at the two other techniques. I double click on it and I can load up the, this is a nice log file viewer. You'll notice that I can look at multiple types of logs. We can look at the database mail feature, we'll look at later, SQL Server, the agent, or the Windows NT logs. And I can actually load up any one of them and I can search across them, I can set filters on them, we can, you know, whatever we need to, we can work with here in the log. I really think this is a good feature. Uh, you could export this if you were having a consultant work with you, you could export. So this is a nice way to work with the log. Now another place uh, that you can work with here is, let me close out of SQL Server, is at the file system. So in my computer, if I go to the install directory, sorry, my install directory is on the D drive, there's a folder called log. This is in every SQL Server, and this is where those logs are stored. So there's the error log. So I will open that with some type of a text editor, and you could see there's my SQL Server error log. You could see the times and what it's actually done. So that's where your logs are going to be stored. Now the third technique is in the administrative tools you would go to the event viewer 
Now, if you don't have administrative tools over here, go to Control Panel, then go to Administrative Tools, and from there go to Event Viewer. And inside the Event Viewer now, you're going to be looking under the Application Log, and you're going to see the source is the MSSQL Server. So this is going to be the instance name, and then you can actually scroll down beneath it to see what's here. And we could actually look to find uh, any errors or warnings that are in the log that are associated with the SQL Server. And I just did those there. Huh. No, it's too many events. It's kind of choking there. But that's where you're going to look for the SQL Server errors. So if you have some trouble, you get into something, that's where you go.